Data references allow you to link various items to attributes in your AF hierarchy. One of the simplest and most common links is the PyPoint data reference, linking a Py tag on a data archive to an attribute of one of your elements. Let's take a look at a few different ways to do this, each with increasing level of complexity. The first way we'll look at is to link an attribute directly to a Py tag in an element. Our tag name will be inletpump.oiltemperature, and it'll be on our data server, PySRV1, and we'll include a unit conversion. The second way that's slightly more complex will be to create it in the element template. We'll use substitution parameters to define the tag name and data server. These are percent element percent to bring in the name of the element and percent attribute to set percent to bring in the name of the attribute. And then that will be used to look up the tag name on the Py server. We'll also use percent server percent, which brings in the default Py data archive name on this client machine. Check out the advanced AF playlist to check out more ways of using substitution parameters. Finally, we're going to go through one advanced configuration where we reference an element that contains the name of our Py data archive. We'll create that element called Py data archive in our AF structure and assign it an attribute called name that holds the name of the Py data archive. That way when different users use this AF database and from different client machines, it's always going to pull in the same name of the Py data archive. Also, the Py data archive isn't hard coded into your PyPoint data reference, so if it ever changes, the only place you need to change it is in your AF structure. We're also going to reference an attribute for the tag name, a child attribute of our current PyPoint data reference. This is in case you need to rebuild the tag name using more complex methods like substitution parameters or string builder, and then you'll be able to reference that tag name. Let's go ahead and start with the simplest method, directly linking an attribute to a Py tag in an element. To get started by creating our PyPoint data reference, let's click on new attribute. And let me call this oil temperature. To get started setting the PyPoint data reference, you can choose it from the data references here under PyPoint, or if you just click settings, it will automatically select the PyPoint data reference as the default type that you would like to create. Before doing that though, let me define the default unit of measure that I want my PyPoint data reference to be displayed as in PySystem Explorer. Let me go here, we go to temperature, and I'd like my output to be displayed in Fahrenheit. I'll show you why this is useful to do this first in just a second. Let me click on settings to create my PyPoint data reference. The default server here has pre-populated with the default server in the known servers table on this machine, PySRV01. Let me click on the magnifying glass to search for my tag on that PyData archive. And here you can see the inlet pump.oil temperature. And let me click OK. Now because I chose the default unit of measure before coming into this window, when I click the source units drop-down menu, it's pre-populated with the different options that are compatible with the default unit of measure that I selected earlier. In this case, my incoming tag is in degrees Celsius, so I'll choose Celsius here. But I want it displayed as Fahrenheit in PySystem Explorer which is why I chose the default unit of measure as Fahrenheit. I'm going to leave the value retrieval method section as is, because I just want the current value of the PyPoint data reference. If you want to do some summary calculations, please see the value retrieval methods video in the same playlist. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see here that it's done the unit conversion of 247 degrees Fahrenheit is the current temperature. And if I right click on it, and go to trend, I can go ahead and trend my data. And here's a history of the inlet pump oil temperature for the last hour. Let's take a look at how you would do this inside of an element template using substitution parameters as the next more complex way of doing this. Before I do that, I am going to delete my inlet pump here to show you how an element created from that template automatically picks up the tag name. And let me check in that change. Library, and go to Element Templates, right click and say New Template. Under Attribute Templates, I'm going to create a new attribute template. Now, I'm going to use the name of this attribute when I reference the Py tag. So I need to use the correct name that's used in my Py tag naming convention. So it is oil temperature. And I'm going to again set the default unit of measure 
to Fahrenheit. You click on settings and you can see here that the data server has defaulted to percent server percent. So this is going to pull on whatever client you're on the default server in this known servers table for that machine. The tag name in this case has defaulted to percent element percent dot percent attribute percent and these are your substitution parameters. So by default this attribute is going to look for a tag with the name of the element a period and the name of the attribute, which for us is actually going to work. Now, most of the time this isn't going to work and you're going to need some more complex naming convention. Check out the advanced playlist to see how to handle imperfect naming conventions. I'm going to set my input source units as Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Let me go back to elements and I'm going to create a new child element under line one using this template. And I'm going to rename this element inlet pump and go ahead and check it in. Let me go to the attributes tab and click refresh. And you can see here that the PyPoint data reference has resolved to PySRV01 because we were using percent server percent and inlet pump dot oil temperature because we set up our template and it resolved to the correct tag name on our PyData archive. Let's go ahead and look at one final configuration, and this is the most advanced configuration. Instead of referencing the server either hard-coded or using percent server percent, if your PyData archive changes names, you'd like to be able to only have to change it once in your AF hierarchy. So what we're going to do is create an element called PyData archive in our AF structure with an attribute called name and we're going to pull that in every time we need to reference the server name. We're also going to reference the tag name through a child attribute. And this child attribute, you could either manually push in the name of your tag through, for instance, PyBuilder, or you could rebuild it through a combination of string builder, substitution parameters, etc. And a lot of that information is in the advanced playlist. So let's go ahead and set this up. First off, I'm going to delete our inlet pump. Here I have an element called PyData Archive, and there's an attribute called name which holds the name of our Py server, PySRV01. Let's go ahead and create a template that then references that attribute. We go to New Template, and here I could rename it, so I could call it Pump Template Advanced. And I should name this one pump template. And let me create a new attribute template. And I'm going to call it oil temperature. We set the default unit of measure and under settings. Now instead of percent server percent, I'm going to use substitution parameters to reference that element that is at the base of our AF hierarchy. To do that, I'm going to do percent at backslash, and the name of that element was called pi data archive, and the attribute it was called name. So this is going to pull in that value of pi v01 that was in that attribute. Now our take name, I actually want to pull in a child and I haven't created that yet. So let me go ahead and click OK and say new child attribute template. And I'm going to call this tag name. We go back to the parent and I'm going to reference this child attribute here as our tag name. And the syntax to do that is percent at period pipe tag name. Our incoming is Celsius. Okay. Now by default I would like to leave this as a value of zero and if you were going to rebuild tag names using string builder um, you would set that up inside your template here. I'm going to override it at the element level. So what I'm going to do here is go to elements 
under line, create a new child element from this advanced template. And here I can call it anything because we're not actually going to reference this name. So I'm going to call inlet pump one. And it's actually trying to reference this tag name here. And I can override this value over here on the on the right. I'm going to call it inlet pump dot oil temperature. Okay. And I do need to go back and set this to a string because it is going to hold our tag name. Let me go ahead and check that in. And let's see if it'll hold it this time. So it's resolving the pyrs of E01 by looking at the pi data archive attribute here. And it's resolving the name of the tag by looking at this tag name here. Let me go ahead and click refresh. And sure enough, it works. So you can see here is the fully resolved tag name. This method is particularly useful if you want to push a large number of tag names into that tag name attribute, child attribute, uh, using PyBuilder, or if you're going to rebuild the names of your tags using some other method like a table lookup, substitution parameters, and string builder. Here we've gone through three different methods of defining PyPoint data references. The first is the simplest by linking an attribute to a Py tag directly in an element, including the unit conversion. The second is linking the attribute to a Py tag in the element template, where we started to use substitution parameters using the name of the element and the name of the attribute to try and find your tag name on your PyData archive, and using percent server percent to pull in the data server uh, as the default PyData archive in your servers table. And finally, we finished with an advanced configuration where you create an element with using the name of your Py data archive so that if your server name ever changes, you need, only need to change it in one place and it's not hard coded into your PyPoint data references. And also it doesn't depend on what client you're on by using Py, uh, percent server percent. And also we reference a child attribute which contains the tag name of your PyPoint data reference so that you can rebuild the tag name there if you have a more complex naming convention. And you can see the advanced playlist to see how to do some of those. Or if you want to individually or in bulk overwrite the default setting in that tag name child attribute using PyBuilder.